Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another session of Ask the Expert. Today, we are going to dedicate our session to a very special uh, feature in the mobile app. Um, it's the search engine. Uh, my name is Daniel Horowitz. I'm the expert genealogist of my heritage. I'm working in the company since 2006. Uh, before that, I was the a teacher and study guide editor of a family history projects called Searching for My Roots in Venezuela. And I did that for almost uh, 15 and a half years. Here in Israel, I'm also volunteering in digitization and transcriptions projects for the Israel Genealogy Research Association. Now, I would have to say here, let's open our mobiles. But before that, I want actually to explain to you, if you are not used to use your mobile, why mobile phones, tablets, devices are pretty much very convenient to do your genealogy. First of all, the device is always with you. And I'm not talking only when you go out of the house, even inside the house, I'm pretty sure uh, that you cannot go more than a couple of feet without looking for that device all over. The second is that it actually reduced the need to carry out of the house and to the uh, research places, folders and documents and all heavy and bulky uh, material with you. Also, it allows you to synchronize across all platforms. We have a website, we have a software and everything is synchronized with the mobile device. Also, it's easy to upload and digitize information with the mobile app features. Um, and if you would like to know more about those, we already did an Ask the Expert, and it's already available in the education uh, section of the website. We will talk about that in a few minutes. It allows you today also to have large uh, space to have your uh, information to save and storage in your devices, and you can even synchronize it and have it also in the cloud without any problem. And finally, uh, it's actually a better or, or a fast way to share with your family members. The mobile app allows you just to invite people and to share things through the, um, the phone without any problem. Okay, so, uh, your mobile device can use for many things in genealogy. You can take pictures like photos of relatives. You can also go and take pictures of cemeteries. It will make easier for you probably to go to those cemeteries with uh, all the navigation capabilities. Uh, goes without saying, but phones can be also be used uh, to talk, you know, to make phone calls, and those are actually very useful when you do genealogy, uh, navigating the website, emails, etc. So just a few of the things you can do with your mobile device. Now, let's go into the mobile. I just entered straight into the research part. And the way to get there in the mobile device is just by clicking on the hamburger. Uh, yes, it's. I know it's lunchtime and you're probably hungry, but no, this one you don't eat. Is the three uh, bars that you will find just in the upper left corner of your phone. Now imagine that here in the center is your phone. Uh, you will notice uh, the time and the uh, battery meter and, and the bars that you may have with your provider. So the center part of your screen is like my phone and where I took all the images. So once you go into the research, you can also enjoy and see that every record that it's in the website on MyHeritage is also available 
in the mobile device. Right now, we're talking about 12.68 billion historical records right there. The most probably intuitive thing to do is just to fill in the first or middle name, a last name and a birth year, and that will be enough. Even one of those will be enough to perform a search. But if you scroll down a little bit, you will be able to use also a place or keywords. You will be also able to select if you want to do an exact search, and that means that whatever you type in with typos or whatever way you do that, that is how the search is going to be performed. And you see that the default is actually not to do an exact because we want to give you more results. And for that, we need to apply the um, synonyms and the uh, spelling variations that we have. But we do want also your uh, results to appear with translations. Remember, MyHeritage has behind the scenes a technology that will translate from Russian, Ukrainian, Greek, Hebrew, and English, or uh, between all of those languages. So if uh, we find results in any of those languages, we will bring them to you as well. Now, from here, you could also, in the top part of the screen, you can activate the advanced search. And it may see that nothing happened. You will need to scroll a little bit down. You will notice that now I have gender, which I didn't have before. And if I scroll down, now I can even add events and relatives. So now it's not just looking for a person, but looking for a person that was born, married, died, or have any other event in a specific time and place. And I can add many events just to make my result more precise. I can also add relatives, meaning the mother or the father or the son, the daughter, the spouse. And that will also focus more your results uh, from all the probably thousands that MyHeritage will have for you. And you can add more relatives as well. Now, on the result part, um, what you're looking now is the uh, list of results for the name Einstein, which is the one I decided to look today. Uh, you see that we have different collections. We have different results. You can just scroll down through the results or, or just with the finger, just move up that and, and it will go scroll down. We will tell you also a little bit more about the person. So in this case, for example, I choose uh, why my heritage will bring me Mileva Marik. Okay, she was a famous person, but I was looking for Einstein, remember? Well, she is not only a Serbian mathematician, she was also the wife of Albert Einstein. So she meets exactly the criteria of my search. I have the birth, the death, the parents, sibling, children, all the information, you will be able to see it from the app without any problem. Another example, uh, this is Elsa Einstein, and this is the second wife and cousin of Albert Einstein. And you thought that endogamy was only in your family, right? Yeah, no. Uh, he also had affairs with family members. Now, I am going back to the beginning because on the top, you will see that all my results are from all the collections that my heritage has available for you. In here, you could click or tab into the all collections and you would be able to select a particular collection. Let's say, uh, that I want to uh, research in newspapers, okay? So I have over there, I scroll down, I see how many results I have in each uh, one of the categories. I will tab on the newspapers and I will see only results from the newspapers. In this case, 
um, again, uh, as expected, a lot of Albert Einstein uh, from different newspapers and uh, the name is highlighted. So I can see that this is really related to the person that I was looking for. Whenever you want, you can just tab on the name of that record and you will see the details of that record without any problem. If you want more information about this collection, you have here the I for information. Whenever you click there, you will see more information about where this collection is coming. In this case, this is the Ohio newspapers from 1793 to 2009. Um, and just if you think that uh, MyHeritage has only newspapers from the US, uh, no, we have newspapers from almost every place in the world. Okay, and by the way, you could click here more and search in that specific collection from here. But if I'm already here in the uh, Portsmouth Sunday Times from Chioto County in Ohio, I can just scroll down and see the actual image of the newspaper and I will be able to zoom in and even to browse to the different pages of the newspaper and try to find here the uh, place where the uh, person is mentioned. I can keep going down and I can see a kind of a transcription from that newspaper and from that record. And why I'm saying kind of, because this is actually OCR. And OCR, optical character recognition, is not all the thing that computers learned how to read. Now, they are very bad students. And as you can see, the OCR is not perfect. But let me give you a trick. And this is what I do also with my computer when I have records from my heritage from newspapers or books that are OCR. I actually select all this and I copy it and then I paste it in the notes of my person. So I don't need to retype the whole information of the article. I just need to go over and make sure to correct all the misspellings. The last thing that my heritage is offering you to do here is to write any comments that you have about this record. And you can tag and say, oh, this is my uncle. I'm related to this person. If somebody finds this, I will be more than happy to be contact. And that is a way to expand the net of your connections. Now, I brought you today another example in one of my other favorite collection, which is the 1940 US Census, because this is a totally different type of record. This is a structure record. And in here, we know exactly where all the information is. So whenever you scroll down, you can see the name of the people and you will know what is in each of the columns and each of the fields. In fact, you see how it says here, show details. Well, we have hidden that to make it more easy to see, but you can click at any time and you can see all the details of this census. And this is very important because this not only is gonna tell you the enumeration district and the roll number, but also the address, the exact address of the page where the enumerator was actually asking the questions. Same here, you will be able to zoom in and zoom out the image and you will be able to copy. Now, a thing that you can do in structure records that you cannot do in OCR is to suggest an alternative. And this is in the case that we spot that the index made a mistake and it's not exactly what it says on the record or you think that the record says different, you can collaborate and you can help other people by correcting or suggesting another option on the record and just uh, write a note here also and you can explain why you think this correction uh, has to be made. If I keep 
scrolling down, you may see also the record detective. And the record detective is the one who gives you other records related, not only to the person you search and your person you found, but also about other people. For example, remember uh, that I was looking into Yetta Einstein in 1940 census. Well, my heritage found her also in the 1930 census, which probably I was not aware of. And probably I can find over there records for the kids or the parents or other people in the family. And I can just jump from record to record and evaluate and research more your family. And here as well, you will be able to make any comments. Now I'm going to go back to the origin of the research page just for a second, because right now I perform a search for all the records, but I want you to see that you could search by collection. The advantage of this is that you're going to get on the topper part, a list of the latest collection that my heritage added. Uh, you will remember the Wells birth, marriage and death and the Norway church records that were the last ones. And you can just simply pass your finger also and view the other ones. My heritage will tell you when the collection is new and even when the collection has images. But if you would like to go into, oh, into any collection, you can click and then search into that collection. If you wanna go into any category, you can click on the category and you will see all the collections in that category. And here you can perform a search either in all the collection, in this case, the census and voters list, or I could choose, uh, let's say the Sweden household examination books and perform my search specifically on only that collection. Okay, now why the MyHeritage mobile app in specific? Well, uh, it allows you to take your tree wherever you go. As I said before, it allows you to synchronize with the website and the software. So by the time you sit in the computer, you have all the information right there as well. And your family members that you invited to your website, they also will see the information almost immediately. The two um, probably most used uh, part of the mobile app, at least for me, is the option to snap, take a shot of a relative that I'm meeting and I don't have it right away. Or whenever I'm visiting somebody and somebody shows me images or photos or documents from my family, I immediately take a snap with the mobile app and the image goes directly into the website. And also the possibility to do audio recording just to treasure the stories about the people that you are researching or simply ask questions to other relative in being able to record their answers and have them on the website. Okay, today I have uh, very few announcements, uh, just as a reminder, because you know it's November already um, and Christmas is coming and the holidays, so we need to start to think about gifts. And this is probably the best gift that my heritage can offer you, or at least can give you to give to other people. The mixed style. A printing service that you can use both in your colorized and enhanced images or in just your regular images that you have uploaded to my heritage and i have actually today a heads up because i heard that we are about to run again the theory of family relativity so this is your time to upload DNA kids, to upload a better family tree, or just simply to improve and grow your family tree so they will be count for the next time that you have a theory of family relativity released. As always, and let me put those URLs in the chat, 
Um, if you want to hear more about my heritage or genealogy in general, I have a few places where you can go totally free. The first one will be the Legacy Family Tree webinar page, where you can see all the webinars done by my heritage and other people as well. You could also uh, hook to next and every Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, to the as the expert session. And November and December is already planned. And next week we're going to talk about one of my other favorite websites, Billion Graves, and how to transcribe information there. And of course, education.myheritage.com, the place where you're going to find video recordings, lectures, articles, downloadable resources that you can use for free, not even a registration is needed. And if you know other people that could be interested in genealogy, feel free to share all this information with them and let them enjoy a little bit of this pleasure of us. For now, uh, that will be all from my side. If you have questions, well, uh, you could write them down in the chat, although I will prefer and will give you the option to unmute yourself. For those of you who are uh, in the um, Facebook Live, uh, you're more than welcome also to join us next week uh, in the as the expert Zoom session, or simply if you are also viewing this as a recording, you could go to the frequent ask questions section of my heritage under myheritage.com slash help. So let's uh, allow you to unmute and answer your questions in the minutes that we still have on. Hi, Daniel. Can you Hi, hear me? Dean. How are you? Good, I'm calling from Washington DC area. Um, I may have missed something you just said. When you are looking at your app on the phone and you want to take a picture, right? Because you find a document that's important. Mm -hmm. Of course, it saves it to your photos. But how do you save it to my heritage website? Ah, okay. Did you Good. mention that you could do that? Yes. So what what you do is you open the app mm -hmm. and you go to the photo section of the app. And you have a plus over there where you can actually take a photo. And that way, the photo you're taking goes straight into the app, uh, into the app and into the website. Okay, one more time. So you get to photos first. You go there first. Yes. Then you can take the picture. And there is a, a big plus button. Yeah. Yes. Someplace yes. around there. When you click yes. that plus button, it should allow you to take a picture. Okay. And, and that's how you take the picture and it goes up. That's There's really another way. Um, mm -hmm. If you want that picture to be related to a specific person, you could go in the tree to that person um, and just on the photo section of that person, you can also click on the plus and add a photo. And then the photo is gonna be um, a, tagged to that individual as well. Well, that's even better because that's what you want to do ultimately. Well, so depending, photos, yeah, depending on, on how or, or what type of photo you are taking. Okay, okay. thank you. Excellent. Uh, yes, Cassandra, pleasure Hi. to see you here again. Thank you. Um, it's about the photos. I uploaded some photos through the app. I wanted, I was trying to get them into certain folders by category, but they didn't go there. Now I don't know how to move a photo from one folder to another folder. Okay, so when you upload or take photos from the app, it goes automatically into a default folder that we call family photos. The best way is actually to do it, or, or the easiest way, it's actually to do it on the website, because on the website, you will be able to go to the photo section. You will see that image 
uh, among the first ones because we show you the latest photos that you have uploaded. And then you can select the photo and say, save it to an album. Okay, and that is how you assign a photo also into the uh, particular album. If you put it in the wrong album, how do you move it to another album? Well, you go into the album, you select the photo, and then you choose remove from album. Now that oh. will not delete the image. That will just take the image out of the album. Okay. Good. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, I see here a question from Stephanie. Uh, many graves, headstones do not have an English interpretation. Well, I will say English words. Uh, what is the best way to verify the names? Um, well, uh, uh, if you search in billion graves, you will need to search in, in a specific language. If you do that in MyHeritage and you see the gravestone in MyHeritage, uh, my heritage will provide you with a translation. Uh, otherwise, you will be able to copy and paste. We use Google Translate probably. Uh, I know another trick is if you take Google Translate on your mobile device, talking about mobile devices, Google Translate in your mobile has an option to point with the camera to a text and translate that text from a picture. Now, it could be a sign street, it could be a, a, a tombstone, it could be a picture of a tombstone as well. So those are the ways that you could translate and interpret the uh, tombstone. Uh, Francine, yes, how can yes. I help you? Yes, this is um, a little bit different. Uh, I was sent a... Uh, a uh, genealogy of people that are in my family, a, a match mm -hmm. of people that are in my family. And I know by the dates of birth and, and death and the family members that they're part of my family. However, this person has it on her tree and she has them buried out in Oklahoma or someplace like that. My family is buried in New York City. So I'm pretty sure it's my family because everything else uh, coincides the names of the children that were born at the time the names of the mother and the father and and that sort of thing but different location so how do i handle that i made well, the correction in my in my genealogy for my okay. chart so let's start by first acknowledging that there is a one percent chance you are wrong and they are not your family okay but mm -hmm. having said that let's say that those are your family uh, if you know that you are right, okay, and those people are not buried where the other person says, you can contact the other person and explain that this is part of your family, that you have done research and you have proved that these people are buried someplace else. Now, the other person can answer, can ignore you, uh, can change, yeah, cannot change, thing. can do whatever they want. This is still a free world and please let's keep it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, the other thing is uh, that if, if you think that you are wrong, uh, you could still ask the other person for uh, their reasons or their proof uh, of what they're saying. And, and then you will need to go into your research and change it. Uh, that's uh, all the possibilities that you yeah. have with the genealogy research. So that leads me to another question. How do you encourage somebody else to answer the messages that you've sent to them? I mean, I'm getting matches all the time and I'm really am following through on the ones that are first cousin or sometimes even second cousin. Francine, and how many times you have called a relative and they don't answer the phone? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. There's nothing we can do, unfortunately. You can keep sending emails and they can keep ignoring you. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Sometimes, sometimes it may happen that they change their email addresses 
and they didn't update my heritage and then mm -hmm. we're sending image mails to the wrong address mm -hmm. uh, or they have the inbox full and it's, it's bouncing but there's really nothing that okay. you but i or my heritage can do against that yeah i do appreciate getting an email message that there is a message in my box otherwise i might not look at it either exactly exactly and that's that's the idea like keeping your email pr address private so nobody else will know what it is but keeping you up to date of what's happening with mm -hmm. your inbox in my heritage okay, uh, thank you I have time for probably one or two more questions uh and uh v gail is saying that sometimes sometimes they are not checking their email box on a frequent basis well i don't know how people can live without checking their inbox every five minutes uh <laughs> but that's only me what can i tell you and i use my phone also to do that after all besides that and genealogy i don't know what else is to do these days in the world um, anybody has uh, any other question? Question. And this might once. not be the forum for this, but um, I I suddenly can't log into my my heritage account. It's asking me for two parties um, authentication, which I never knew that I had set up. I don't believe I set it up, but it's telling me open my authenticator app. The authenticator app gives me a code. I put the code in, and it tells me it's the wrong code. So. We don't have to discuss it here if you don't have the time, but if you could just point me in the right direction to somebody uh, I could talk to. to well, to unfortunately, talk. Dave, um, I have very few things that I can tell you about. Like if the, the two factor notification is great. Um, and I, uh, I agree <laughs> and I will use it. Except I don't know how to use it. I, I, I it, are you it using a code are you I, using hmm? the Google uh, two factor authentication? Yes, sir. And and do you have a my heritage line over there that gives you a code? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> If it's so, supposed to be there, I'll just keep trying. And if I yes, can't like the, come, the, come up with the authenticator has a line with numbers for each of your websites or if, if each of your accounts. One of it should be MyHeritage. And that is the number that you need to type over there. If not, um, the only other thing that I can tell you is uh, um, to drop a line to support at okay. myheritage.com with the word like help two factor authentication not working um and they will uh get in touch with you um if you have not solved that like in the next couple of hours just drop me an email and i will uh see if i can hook you up with uh, somebody there more direct i appreciate that Okay. Uh, Helpful as usual, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, Francine, mm -hmm. Francine, one more thing. Wait one second. You need to unmute. Um, I have two phones and I can do all the research on one phone and answer uh, any of the uh, open any of the emails and whatever on one phone. But on the second phone, it appears that I am not recognized at all, even though I'm using the same email address. How do well, I? Each phone is independent, so you will need to log in in each phone, like separately. So just I'm make not... sure. Yeah, just it, make sure that you log in. Yeah, I stay logged in on one of them. And the other one, I, I I I had logged in, and now I'm getting to say the message that says that it's an unrecognized. This phone well, is unrecognized. Well, probably what's happening is that when whenever the app the the app updates, uh, you need to it's running from from the beginning, let's say, and you are not logged in anymore because okay. it's kind of, it's a new version of the app. Okay, because okay. I pick up whichever phone is handy. It's always by my side. One's always by my side. Excellent, excellent. Okay, okay right. thank guys, you. thank you very much uh, for being here today. I hope uh, you will have a lovely day and a wonderful weekend. Uh, hope you. to see you the next time. And in the meantime, just why not 
make a little bit more of genealogy research. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Daniel. Bye, Daniel. Bye, thank Bye. you.